code division, multiple access is a channel access method used by various radio communication technologies. CDMA is an example of multiple access, where several transmitters can send information simultaneously over a single communication channel. This allows several users to share a band of frequencies. To permit this without undue interference between the users, CDMA employs spread spectrum technology and a special coding scheme. CDMA is used as the access method in many mobile phone standards such as a CDMA1, CDMA2000, and WCDMA, which are often referred to as simply CDMA. History the technology of code division, multiple access channels has long been known. In the Soviet Union, the first work devoted to this subject was published in 1935 by Professor Dmitry V. Agiv. It was shown that through the use of linear methods, there are three types of signal separation, frequency, time and compensatory. The technology of CDMA was used in 1957, when the young military radio engineer Leonid Kuprianovich in Moscow, made an experimental model of the wearable automatic mobile phone, called LK-1 by him, with a base station. LK-1 has a weight of 3 kg, 20 to 30 km operating distance, and 20 to 30 hours of battery life. The base station, as described by the author, could serve several customers. In 1958, Kuprianovich made the new experimental pocket model of mobile phone. This phone weighed 0.5 kg. To serve more customers, Kuprianovich proposed the device, named by him as Correlator. In 1958, the USSR also started the development of the Altai National Civil Mobile Phone Service for Cars, based on the Soviet MRT-1327 standard. The phone system weighed 11 kg. It was placed in the trunk of the vehicles of high-ranking officials and used a standard handset in the passenger compartment. The main developers of the Altai system were VNIIS and GSPI. In 1963 this service started in Moscow and in 1970 Altai service was used in 30 USSR cities. Uses one of the early applications for code division multiplexing is in the global positioning system. This predates and is distinct from its use in mobile phones. The Qualcomm standard is 95, marketed as CDMA1. The Qualcomm standard is 2000, known as a CDMA2000, is used by several mobile phone companies, including the Global Star Satellite Phone Network. The UMTS 3G mobile phone standard, which uses WCDMA. CDMA has been used in the Omnitrax satellite system for transportation logistics. Steps in CDMA modulation. CDMA is a spread spectrum multiple access technique. A spread spectrum technique spreads the bandwidth of the data uniformly for the same transmitted power. A spreading code is a pseudo-random code that has a narrow ambiguity function, unlike other narrow pulse codes. In CDMA, a locally generated code runs at a much higher rate than the data to be transmitted. Data for transmission is combined via bitwise XOR with the faster code. The figure shows how a spread spectrum signal is generated. The data signal with pulse duration of is aid with the code signal with pulse duration of. Therefore, the bandwidth of the data signal is and the bandwidth of the spread spectrum signal is. Since is much smaller than, the bandwidth of the spread spectrum signal is much larger than the bandwidth of the original signal. The ratio is called the spreading factor or processing gain and determines to a certain extent the upper limit of the total number of users supported simultaneously by a base station. Each user in a CDMA system uses a different code to modulate their signal. Choosing the codes used to modulate the signal is very important in the performance of CDMA systems. The best performance will occur when there is good separation between the signal of a desired user and the signals of other users. 
The separation of the signals is made by correlating the received signal with the locally generated code of the desired user. If the signal matches the desired user's code then the correlation function will be high and the system can extract that signal. If the desired user's code has nothing in common with the signal the correlation should be as close to zero as possible. This is referred to as cross-correlation. If the code is correlated with the signal at any time offset other than zero, the correlation should be as close to zero as possible. This is referred to as autocorrelation and is used to reject multipath interference. An analogy to the problem of multiple access is a room in which people wish to talk to each other simultaneously. To avoid confusion, people could take turns speaking, speak at different pitches, or speak in different languages. CDMA is analogous to the last example where people speaking the same language can understand each other, but other languages are perceived as noise and rejected. Similarly, in radio CDMA, each group of users is given a shared code. Many codes occupy the same channel, but only users associated with a particular code can communicate. In general, CDMA belongs to two basic categories, synchronous and asynchronous. Code division multiplexing. The digital modulation method is analogous to those used in simple radio transceivers. In the analog case, a low-frequency data signal is time-multiplied with a high-frequency pure sine wave carrier, and transmitted. This is effectively a frequency convolution of the two signals, resulting in a carrier with narrow sidebands. In the digital case, the sinusoidal carrier is replaced by Walsh functions. These are binary square waves that form a complete orthonormal set. The data signal is also binary and the time multiplication is achieved with a simple XOR function. This is usually a Gilbert cell mixer in the circuitry. Synchronous CDMA exploits mathematical properties of orthogonality between vectors representing the data strings. For example, binary string 1011 is represented by the vector. Vectors can be multiplied by taking their dot product, by summing the products of their respective components and V equals, then their dot products UV equals AC plus BD. If the dot product is zero, the two vectors are said to be orthogonal to each other. Some properties of the dot product aid understanding of how WCDMA works. If vectors are and be orthogonal, then in each user in synchronous CDMA uses a code orthogonal to the other's codes to modulate their signal. An example of four mutually orthogonal digital signals is shown in the figure. Orthogonal codes have a cross-correlation equal to zero. In other words, they do not interfere with each other. In the case of IS-95 64-bit Walsh codes are used to encode the signal to separate different users. Since each of the 64 Walsh codes are orthogonal to one another, the signals are channelized into 64 orthogonal signals. The following example demonstrates how each user's signal can be encoded and decoded. Examples start with a set of vectors that are mutually orthogonal. An example of orthogonal functions is shown in the picture on the right. These vectors will be assigned to individual users and are called the code, chip code, or chipping code. In the interest of brevity, the rest of this example uses codes, V, with only two bits. Each user is associated with a different code, say V. A 1 bit is represented by transmitting a positive code, V, and a 0 bit is represented by a negative code, V. For example, if V equals equals in the data that the user wishes to transmit is, then the transmitted symbols would be equals equals. For the purposes of this article, we call this constructed vector the transmitted vector. Each sender has a different, unique vector V chosen from that set, but the construction method of the transmitted vector is identical. Now, due to physical properties of interference, if two signals at a point are in phase, they are to give twice the amplitude of each signal. But if they are out of phase, they subtract and give a signal that is the difference of the amplitudes. 
digitally. This behavior can be modeled by the addition of the transmission vectors, component by component. If sender 0 has code and data, and sender 1 has code and data, and both senders transmit simultaneously, then this table describes the coding steps. Because signal 0 and signal 1 are transmitted at the same time into the air, they add to produce the raw signal. Plus equals this raw signal is called an interference pattern. The receiver then extracts an intelligible signal for any known sender by combining the sender's code with the interference pattern. The following table explains how this works, and shows that the signals do not interfere with one another. Further, after decoding, all values greater than 0 are interpreted as 1 while all values less than 0 are interpreted as 0. For example, after decoding, data 0 is, but the receiver interprets this as, values of exactly 0 means that the sender did not transmit any data, as in the following example. Assume signal 0 equals is transmitted alone. The following table shows the decode at the receiver. When the receiver attempts to decode the signal using sender 1's code, the data is all zeros. Therefore the cross-correlation is equal to zero and it is clear that sender 1 did not transmit any data.